What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala, Bo- your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terence? Good old humor, man. But today we're not talking about news. Actually, we're talking today. about someone. We're talking with someone who has been in the news, lah. A lot, a lot recently. Yeah. A, lot. a lot. I mean, he's been in the news quite often over the past few years, but yeah. past few weeks, a lot for and for variety of reasons. Eh? Yeah, when it rains, it really pours. Yeah, it really pours. Yeah. Um, he's the he's a holder of multiple long distance uh, national records. Um, he's been a quite an outspoken athlete for the past mm. a lot of years. And today we have him on our show, none other than Mr. So Ru Yong. Hey guys, what's hey. up, man? Thanks for coming, coming uh, talk yeah. to the show. It, it's it's amazing that we have Mister So Ryong here. Uh, yeah. Do we call you Ryong for for simplicity or, or yeah, yeah, whatever you or, wanna call or me Ray or, or whatever? Or, or. Uh, well, Ray is like you know when I go to America or UK, uh, okay, they, okay, they okay. can't pronounce Ray Yong right? oh, Okay, right. Uh, so uh, you just have a simple simplicity. You just call me Ray la. Ray, Ray. Okay, yeah. okay. Ray. So yeah. it's cool. so it's Ray Ryong. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, okay. I mean, like, yeah, so, so I mean, we sp- actually spoke about you a few podcasts ago on a few different podcasts. One was when you made the announcement for the two point four kilometer challenge. Yeah. Uh, one was when you announced your current cur- current crowdfunding campaign, like. Yeah. Um, and we we all know that that crowdfunding campaign is is about an ongoing court case that we have many questions about, but we know we can't talk about, mm-hmm. right? Um, until until that case kind of pans out. But even aside of that, there are many many questions that we want to ask you about recent incidents as well as your general approach to life as an athlete like. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah fair enough and, and you've and Harish you've had a, a very intimate sit down with Ryong already like, right? yeah last In week last first time I met him yeah. um, it was actually for a shoot for CNA where we were talking about racial issues <laughs> so last week we were talking about race and this week we were talking about race again yeah, and and I mean, yeah, he, uh, he, he Ryan, you did share with me certain uh, details about what's been going on and all. So, and that's when we talked about you coming on the show, uh, just to talk about the broader mm. per, uh, POV of you, even during the crowdfunding. And yeah. aside from all that, just your life as an athlete, uh, because right now you're the holder of the national f- ten thousand meter, five thousand meter, ten thousand meter half marathon and marathon records, mm. right? Um, and and yeah, so so to start off. Um, like right now, we are in the midst of your current crowdfunding campaign, right? I mm. think that's what's been a lot on a lot of people's minds. Um, it is to to raise legal fees for the ongoing defamation case. But what made you want to crowdfund in the first place? I I guess um yeah the I mean we all know that you no know, legal legal expenses are not um not not cheap. Mm-hmm. I mean this one was actually because the the verdict in the district court didn't quite go our way. Um, mm. I mean, I, I have a lot to say about that, but we can't say. It. I mean, I'm not going to discuss that at length right now. We'll talk yeah. about it more after the appeal. But basically, we feel that we have very strong grounds for appeal. Uh, but in the meantime, we still need to settle the damages that were awarded mm-hmm. in the district court. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think all, throughout this entire like ever since I first spoke out about this incident, yeah, there have been a lot of supporters who like believe in my side of the story and they believe in the truth. And, and this, I mean, I basically open up a chance for them to you know like support s- support. Mm. Uh, me a little bit more. Of course, they can't all come to court and like and like testify. Yeah. Mm. But they can support in their own little way. And I think this was a this was a very cool way to see like you know people who I hadn't been in contact with for many years. They step forward and they like pledge a sum of money. So it, yeah. was, it was actually quite a cool experience. Wait, you've mm. raised how much? Uh, uh, seventy thousand dollars. The last I checked, which was two day, two days ago. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah. the the amount that is needed is hundred and eighty. Yes, right? that's the that's the target amount. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay. Okay. Actually, uh, just just one thing in case you're hearing like. Like a little rustling and everything, right? Um, Ryong is actually doing something that is very human in front of us. He's eating <laughs> biscuits. So in case you think that he's like this superhuman who doesn't doesn't eat meals or uh, only eats protein or anything, he's not. He's drinking pokari sweat and eating biscuits. I got yeah. here and Terence asked me what I had for lunch. I was like, oh, I forgot to have lunch today. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not some like low GI biscuits, yeah. you know, full grain. It's just. Like just junk, sweet and salty biscuits, which are surprisingly <laughs> yeah. addictive, la. So the next yeah. time, the next time Singapore gets gold medal for marathon, we got some dips on it, la, Yeah, we got we, some dips on it. We <laughs> fed him, la, we fed <laughs> him, yeah. But but yeah, yeah. So I, I guess that that is um, I I bring that up because I think when we talk about athletes, right, often the impression that we have of them are like they're superhuman, they're infallible, they they even the personalities and everything, you know, they it's rock hard, it's rock solid, everything, uh. 
But um, I think you are quite unique in that you are much more outspoken than any other Singapore athlete we've we've come across. Uh, and, and yeah, you know, you know, like even this crowdfunding campaign, you laid out a lot of uh, of yourself out there, lah. Is there is there why why do you think is the case that you know so many Singapore athletes are are not as outspoken as you, and why you specifically uh, seem to be perceived as much more outspoken, lah? Um. Well, I think the bar is quite low in terms of uh, in Singapore in terms of like um, being outspoken because mm. most people I mean most people not not athletes but most people in Singapore generally don't really believe in uh, not, not don't believe in they just they don't they don't really like they try not to stick out they mm. try not to stand out rather mm. uh, I think in from a young age we're just kind of taught to you know be be obedient in school and like don't ask many questions like yeah yeah you know, just keep your head down do your homework and 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 get good grades on exams and um and it, it does show in a way when like when I, I when I studied overseas I when I went to the US to study the Singaporean kids like they struggle in some aspects of life there. Like mm. for example, um, it, could be, it could be presentations in project work. It could be pl- class. It could be class participation. It could be like, you know, I mean, especially in the US where it's a very outspoken society. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it feel a bit like out of place, lah. Yeah, where, sorry, where in the US did you? I study? I went to the University of Oregon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. so Portland, yeah. like uh, near Portland. Yeah, yeah near Portland, okay. but Eugene, okay. very near the Nike World Headquarters. And mm. uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Is that why you chose that university? Well, I was a Nike athlete back then, so oh. yeah, there was a, it was a, it was a huge, huge like uh, draw, right? I and see, then I when see. I was there, like uh, Ni- the Nike Singapore office, like uh, Andrew Kwong was the manager then, so he, he organized like he put a few favors, got got them to give me a tour of the campus. Mm, mm. Yeah, because it's not, yeah. not, you can't just walk onto the campus and right. see it. Yeah, yeah, you can't. It's only for a select few. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really, really cool. Like, it was like the world's coolest university, mm. but like, you, people work there. You mm. know? And, got then, it, got and it. then they have like, you know, the Cristiano Ronaldo football fields. They have like, uh. they have like, um, then they have all these cool stories. I like, you know, oh, this is where Tiger Woods like came to visit. And then uh, Phil Knight, which was the, yeah. the CEO yeah. of Nike, was just like, all right, hit the ball. Um, break any window you want, I'll pay for it. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Something like that. And then he really, and, and apparently it really happened. I wasn't there to watch, but okay, okay. yeah, cool story. And, and uh, Nike, I mean, Nike is known as a brand yeah. that's really out there and yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like in your face. And mm. like, I mean, they pride themselves on being the best and they're not, they're not, put it this way, they're, they're, they're not, they're not afraid of people seeing them as an arrogant or proud brand, but they, they mm. are really the market leader and they are, they, they yeah, are yeah. number one for, for many years already. So, yeah. Yeah. so are you saying that that experience in the US kind of shaped you or have you always been outspoken since young? I would say it shaped me, I mean, like exposed me to, to uh, like, b- before that I never lived outside the US. I'm sorry, I never lived alone outside of Singapore for an extended period of time before. And that was what year? This was 2013. Sorry, 2013, mid, like middle of 2013 all the way to December 2015. Okay. Yeah, so I actually studied one year in NUS first. So I actually had the blessing of studying both in Singapore for a year and then like in an American university for two and a half years. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Okay. yeah, so, but yeah, I mean, huge eye-opener. Mm-hmm. I, I would say that even before that, I was, I was definitely someone who was a little bit more outspoken for Singaporean standards. You know, mm. like in, in class, I'm not afraid to, you know, like, raise my hand and, and, and say something or, or yeah. like uh, in, in the university you know I, I remember my first year of NUS uh, I was selected to go for the ASEAN University Games but mm. um, and NUS wasn't like I mean like you're selected to represent Singapore at ASEAN University Games but you had to pay mm. like a certain percentage I can't remember it was 30 or 40 percent mm. of, of the travel and accommodation and stuff and, and I just kind of felt that I mean it's not right like, you know like is this is the kind of support we have for sports in Singapore mm. like how come how come like Athletes selected to represent Singapore still have to pay like a percentage of. I mean, it wasn't a huge sum of money. I, I maybe it was nine hundred dollars or thousand dollars. But the principle of it, like. yeah, yeah. And then we were just talking about this before the podcast, right? Sometimes yeah. in this world, people who stick up for their principles get fucked, lah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, that was um. How old were you back then? I was twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I was twenty one. Yeah. I mean, I basically went to into a bit of a battle or a war with the with the sports office. Like, I'm like, mm. I'm like, you know, like, you know, we're working our asses off here, and then and then when we get selected to represent uh, the the Singapore universities, you know, we yeah. have to we have to pay like like nine hundred dollars, thousand dollars. Are we yeah. all students working? Where's the money going to come from? Yeah. Wait. So you were saying that this was your first sort of. Uh, when you realize that actually I, I do speak up more than like the average yes Singaporean. yes because I mean there were I mean of course there were many other athletes who were chosen but 
I think a lot, a lot of them like I think they took money from their parents to go or, mm. or whatever the case might be. And you no, know, there's really nothing wrong with that. But I also think that our our, our kids are just very sheltered, lah. You know, like you mm. know, in the US, once you're 18, you can kick out of the house, you go to university, you take correct, your correct. you take your own loan, you go and do your own things. Really, you know, your parents yeah. are not gonna like spoon feed you. But here, it's like kind of like, you know, a lot of them still live with the parents. Parents still give them allowance, and then mm. like, oh you or, oh you need you need like money to go for competition. Okay, daddy help you pay. You know, mm. <laughs> like mm. a bit sheltered, lah. And then yeah, like, yeah. okay, like my, my to, to my benefit, I think. Uh, you can call it a benefit. You can call it whatever you want. But like my parents were always, I mean, my, my, they always stood up for their principles. So my dad, mm. it's not my dad can afford. My, my dad was a lieutenant colonel in the in the air force, and he's mm. an engineer in SIA now. I see, I see. Like he can afford nine hundred bucks for me to go for competition lah. But yeah. it's like a oh, thousand dollars. I can't remember about that. But it's like to him, it's a matter of principle. It's like how come you get selected to represent Singapore, then you have to pay to uh. go and compete. You pay for like you pay forty percent of your flight and your accommodation to go and compete. He said this is not right. But I mean, like, so I think it's a lot easier to do it. Uh, because my 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 dad was like on the same like same line you, on the same page. Yeah. If if my dad was like, hey, no, 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 keep quiet, quiet, don't 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 go fight. Like, I pay for you. Mm. Maybe it would have been different. Uh, but eventually, I think what was really cool is that um, Red Sports like the direct the, the founder of Red Sports, Uncle Leslie Tan, like mm. step forward. He works for NYSI now. Mm. Um, and NYSI is what? Uh, National Youth Sports Institute. Okay, yeah. okay. Apparently, they need to work on their marketing. People don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but they, they're in charge of taking care of the, the youth athletes. Lah, now. Yeah. Um, you know, there's like, there's sports, sports Singapore, and then there's yeah. the Singapore Sports Institute, and then there's the National Youth Sports Institute. Yeah. Mm, mm. But anyway, like, Red Sports step forward to pay for it, so always be thankful for whatever Uncle Leslie did. But you did, you did, um, that means you did take it up. Uh, to the new uh, the the administration. Yeah, well, I mean, everything. it was the first time I used social media to to fight. Actually, oh, you use social media, yeah. not no letter or, uh, or. Well, well, like when emails and WhatsApp messages. I mean, you know, sometimes how some of these like administrators work, right? Like yeah. emails are easily ignored, messages mm. are easily like sh- shrugged aside. But when when I social pushed media. it out on social media, they couldn't ignore it anymore, mm. la. So, and, like, and that was twenty thirteen when Facebook was still twenty twelve. Uh, when, when, when Facebook, Facebook was, was, was still in its infancy. Wow, wow, West, yeah, wow, wow, yeah wow, exactly. West and then no such thing as uh, last time. I think the big thing was you know, like female bloggers. You know, like no mm. one's no one's gonna pay an athlete like five hundred dollars, thousand dollars to post on on Facebook. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. whereas now, let's say now if I was selected for competition and had to like you know pay thousand dollars, two thousand dollars to go and go for competition. I mean, like there there are ways to find this money. You know, like mm. I can. I I have brands that will pay pay me like a thousand dollars or whatever to to do a post on IG and Facebook. So yeah. the yeah. money is, I mean, like of course now, more established as a runner, more established yeah. as a personality, the marketing value is so higher lah. But back mm. then, you know, like twenty one year university athlete, never yeah. gone for Sea Games before, never medaled for Singapore before. I mean, like you don't really have a, you don't really have a spoon to 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 eat with lah. Mm. Um, and then you're attending classes, not as if you're working. Yeah. And then like. Parents really paying for school fees. Then now you qualify for competition. You gonna ask your parents to pay for you to go again, man. Mm. I mean, I just felt it was not right, like you know. And I, right. I was like, it cannot be like Singapore is a first world country, and then like, uh, and then we are affluent, we are rich. Now mm. sports people like have to have to do this kind of thing. What right? like like I don't I didn't I didn't yeah. really see the logic behind so it. So was there any yeah. change in policy after that after you raised it? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, after no. I left, I went to the US, right? <laughs> so oh. I didn't I didn't follow. But I do not think there was a change. Um, yeah, but but that was quite interesting that your you said your dad was a Latin colonel in the Singapore Air, Air Force. Air Force. Yeah. So you would think someone who is in the army or, or military service for that long would sort of toe the line and not you know rock the boat too much in terms of challenging authority and things like that, lah. But when do you think do you think this you know because. Your your dad as well is a bit of a maverick, you know, like Top Gun maverick kind of, you know. And then that's, I, that, that has come through. Yeah, with I mean, well. I, I won't speak on his behalf because I never witnessed my dad at work. Uh, I can say that my dad was quite popular at work with his subordinates, mm. um, but he wasn't the type. Like, of course, I've been to military functions as a kid with him. Mm. You know how like, uh, we, we were actually posted to the US for two and a. half Yes. Okay, my sister was actually born in the US. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you were th- and you were there as a Yeah, I was there as a kid, like, you as know, a kid. like <laughs> Oh, which part of the of the US? So two two stints. One was Phoenix, Arizona. Oh wow. One okay. was Clovis, New Mexico. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So you when like I was air, ba- t- air bases. Air bases, wow. yeah. And these are like quite quiet okay, Phoenix maybe less quiet, but like, these are like in, you live in the middle of nowhere on it. Yeah. You're just there for the air base. So it's yeah. like it's an interesting 
Mm. Place to grow up, like you I'm, grow seeing, up. I'm seeing images of a kid, Singaporean kid, running around like the deserts around Phoenix. Is that where the airplanes, the F 16s yeah. over that, and all that? Yeah, it was so where, it's damn hot, you know, in Phoenix. So it's like, you know, you leave the house to go to the swimming pool, right? You have to run there because the ground is so hot. So yeah, that was the yeah. scene, uh, that, that's where you realize, oh, fuck, I can reach the pool damn fast. <laughs> So that's how he trained for you. Oh. He, he said the innate yeah. talent was from, from that. From the Arizona. But my point being, so like, you know how <laughs> there's like, sometimes there are military functions, you bring the yeah. family and then a yeah. VIP arrive, right? It's some colonel or, yeah. or what like that. My dad, I think he was captain or major. I mean, yeah. the rank not so big. Yeah. You, you see like a lot of officers, like, you know, they, they'll rush to go and flank the VIP. Yeah. My, my dad boots up on he would choose uh. He, okay. he, 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 yeah, he wasn't the type to wayang, he wasn't the type to like, you know, like, like oh, sir, 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 oh, okay, and, and okay. like, entertain the VIP, just kind of mind his own business. So, um, I think, yeah, I mean, like, looking back now, I really respect that. Like, mm. now I really cannot tahan when, like, you know, in, when I was in the army, I really cannot tahan when people, like, fucking wayang, like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. yeah and then, like, everything also, like, sir, 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 oh, your joke, them funny, sir, I mean, like, this, yeah. kind of, this kind of nonsense, like, you know, like, it really rubs me the, the wrong way. I mean, I can understand why people want to do it, because it does... I mean, it does help their career of oh, yeah, 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 in a yeah. way. Uh, but I mean, I, I'm, I, I think I respect that my dad like, wasn't, wasn't the type that would bend yeah. over backwards for something like that. No, I know, I know we yeah. were joking about it, but was it really there that, you're, that you did, started to do like, more running and everything? Where, where, did, where did this the uh, idea of become a runner or what? When did that come across? Now, now when I look back, I mean, I, I did play a good deal of sports there. So mm. like, over there, school starts at like maybe 9 o'clock and finishes at 3 o'clock or maybe even 4 o'clock like this is like yeah. elementary school you know primary yeah. school it's not like here where we start damn early okay and then and then like finish by like 1 o'clock and mm. then like it's very academic heavy like over there of course we had homework and stuff but that I, I felt looking back there was a more time like the breaks were longer you mm. can go and play basketball yeah. you know, play like you know like this thing called kickball we didn't have baseball but it's dangerous right, right? Elementary, school, elementary school kids with baseball back. so we will pitch a like you pitch a soccer ball and then you mm. kick the ball so it's like Kickball uh, instead yeah, of softball, yeah. baseball is called kickball. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we were playing some of these games and I found that I was not bad at sports. Like mm. oh, I remember at, at basketball, when I played against Singaporean kids, it was like one of me and like it would be five Singaporean kids on the other team because like, like I was just able to run like mm. like a lot more than they were. And you were how yeah, old at that point? I was like Wait, sorry, I think you, eight, nine years old. You eight, won nine, you yeah. won versus five. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basketball. And I didn't really think about it back much huh? back then. Right? But the but score is <laughs> like yeah, the score is quite even on like yeah, can, can win on. Full court, uh, full court. No, no, not full court, oh, not full court. Okay. Yeah. Not not full court. It's like, versus, but how does it even, yeah, get, even come about? discuss? Yeah. Like let's do one versus five. It's just natural. I think cause like when it I, now when I no you're really testing my memory. But when it was like two v two, three v three, like my team always win oh, because I was able. Yeah. I mean, I I I was able to. I mean, I was not bad at shooting. I could uh, like, I could run. Uh, mm. uh, so definitely, I think some. I mean, I'm not gonna like say like all my success is down to just hard work, right? I mean, obviously, it's a bit of talent. And no matter what you do to reach mm. the top of your field, you need a bit of um, uh, talent. So I think that genetics definitely play a part there. My dad okay. and mom were both like sports people, so mm. that helped. Uh, yeah, my mom ran distance. She was a cross country captain for Raffles back in her day. My dad was basketball captain for Raffles mm. back in the day and wow. he he played like on the left wing on, on the football team as well oh yeah. so sports runs in your family like yeah yeah my, my, my dad is particularly athletic my mom is more like you know endurance specific endurance. yeah my mom doesn't have ball sense but my dad my dad got ball sense yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. But my mom is like my mom, but eventually I took out my mom's sport like, which is like endurance running but you were considering yeah. basketball I mean I, like, when I came back I when I came back, I played basketball in Singapore. I realized that basketball wasn't as big here. It was football. Mm, yeah. So then I started playing football. And then I really enjoyed football. Yeah. I really want... And you know, as a primary school kid, you dream of like, oh, represent Singapore in football. I like played Champions League. Oh, yeah, that, kind of, yeah. that kind of nonsense. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, but uh, from a young age, I think my dad and my mom were always like, oh, football, no future one in Singapore. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm. So, so I, I mean, I, I couldn't understand why back in the day, but now when I look away, like... Yeah. Like football is like progressing or, or regressing here regressing. at this point of time. Yeah, yeah la, like he didn't go down that path. La. <laughs> so, but that means, that means at, at a young age, you kind of decided, um, let's, let me focus on track. Or- uh, well, I, I was always decent at track. and I mean, I was good at track and I was good at football. Mm-hmm. Um, good at football probably because I could run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean like skill-wise, I know like a lot of people who are better than me, especially in secondary school. The people who have been training like 
proper football training from a young age, they are better. Okay, yeah, okay. But I was more on the endurance side of things. But anyway, um, so I ended up joining track and field cross country in secondary school and then mm. yeah, just went ahead from there. And, and, and uh, your parents were always supportive la, like of whatever sporting endeavours you wanted. So there was always a was there always a plan to go pro with whichever you... No, no, no. My, 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 if I told my parents I wanted to go pro at a young age, they would have... Com- Stopped you. Yeah, completely shot me down. Mm. Yeah. Why, 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 why? Like, I mean, they were... They it's, were okay, they, they, they are like practical... No, but... I mean, they were school athletes. Uh, school athletes. They, they okay. never took it on as a career. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I think that my, my, my parents... At the end of the day, they are practical Singaporeans. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, my dad's an engineer and my mom, mom's a teacher. You don't get more much more practical than that, right? Mm. Yeah, so... I think that they didn't quite see a future in sports. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, when I started representing Singapore and winning, like, <laughs> winning the SEA Games and stuff, I think they, yeah. and then, like, being offered contracts with brands and stuff, I think that's when they saw, like, oh, potentially. Uh, but end of the day, you know, like, uh, we're all practical people. So, I mean, I, I got my university degree. Yeah. And then, like, mm-hmm. I was work, I was balancing work and education and running for a long time. And it's only like this year that I signed a professional athlete contract with Under Armour that was on the scale that allowed me to do it like full time. But even then, I, I'm doing study. I'm doing some studies on the side. Like I told Harish about it. But I'm like, I'm currently taking a degree in law. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that means your your degree in the uh, Oregon was was in business. Business. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got business it. Business administration. So, so the plan is to be if anything later fall back on being a lawyer la. Yeah. Well, I think I'm gonna graduate before my professional athlete contract is up. So. Mm-mm. It's just one of those things I feel Running I, I can train for 2-3 hours a day mm-hmm. And recovery takes a lot of that uh, Time But I, I do have a, Like Maybe like It's not going to hurt me To attend classes For like 3 hours a day And then I like, mm-hmm. do Do a, a little bit more work For like 2-3 hours a day Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. okay. So, so when you went to Oregon It was already On a scholarship Right Yeah It was a Athletic scholarship It was actually ac- Academic spo- uh, Our Singapore government Academic Sports Singapore Academic oh, scholarship Oh Sports Singapore yeah. Okay mm-hmm. But you were already Kind of Uh Approaching sports quite intensely back then. Like. I was, oh, when I was awarded the scholarship, it was after when I was in the military. So, mm-hmm. I was serving NSO. It was after my JC. So, I, I mean, I had success in JC. Like, I won cross country both years for mm-hmm. A division. I won the 5,000 meters both years. And in my JC two year, I won the steeplechase, the 3,000 meter steeplechase. And then I went to the ASEAN schools games and won the steeplechase for Singapore there. Mm-hmm. So, I think that was the first time I stood on the podium and heard like, the Singapore national anthem mm. being played, mm. yeah, it was quite a, it, it was, and it was quite an inspirational moment. I mean, yeah. the first time, and then after that. So in secondary school, you didn't compete. I competed, but I never. I my best was like bronze medal. Oh, yeah. I think I, I took I took it a lot more seriously in junior college. I met uh, Coach Stephen Quick when I was in junior college, and mm. I think that not that I, my previous coaches were lousy, but I think he got through to me in a way that they couldn't. Like they got, they got through to me in terms of like, you know, taking my life seriously. Okay. It's not just about. Training is how you recover, you know. It's yeah. how much you sleep. It's what you eat. Da 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 da. So yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, um, cause I'm I never I was never in the sports or anything la. I was the one that was bullied by the sports people in school. Okay, <laughs> Terence, Terence has this chip on his shoulder, right? That he imagines. No, not say imagines. I'm not. I'm not gaslighting, but I must clarify because yeah. it's always <laughs> it's the thing okay, between us. Okay. But, but but my, but I I I study psychology and I love hearing about like how high performing athletes and all. Mm. How what what is this hurdle you overcome? Because you just mentioned you didn't take it seriously in secondary school, but you still ended up with bronze. And then JC you took it more seriously. What does it mean to take it more seriously? Like for the lay person who okay. doesn't understand. So like I mean Harish and I attended the same secondary school, I think. So And mm. Terrence as well. I also I also oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah. So AstroTurf, right? Ah uh, AstroTurf, mm. yes. Yeah. The AstroTurf is like basically there's this what used to be the parade square in the Raffles uh, Bishan. Mm. Yeah, school. Right. They they laid an astro turf on it, and then it became like the hockey field. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I I'm I'm guessing yeah. it got laid in part particular because hockey. That's what we play on, like astro Yeah, yeah. So so it meant that the uniform groups that used to march on the parade square couldn't do it yeah, anymore, like, Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah like, you can still march on astro turf, <laughs> what? There's more concrete really. than astro turf. <laughs> yeah, we, we, that, this is a the end, the yeah. never ending battle between sports and never uniform ending, groups. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, I was there every day, like, You know, training, mm. no training. I'm there before training. I'm there. And there doing no what? Uh, play, playing football. Oh, playing football. football, okay. football yeah, yeah, astro turf yeah. was the football place. <laughs> yeah, 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 people, yeah. people. So, so to clarify, people played football. Yeah, on the astro turf. Yeah. when it wasn't being used for training. Like, yeah, right, correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. So you just. I, oh, I, was, I mean, like you know, I was having fun, uh, and then um, yeah, like was didn't have the best diet. I would say, you know, mm. I wasn't 
that invested in academics mm. um, just just wanted to have fun just and, 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 I, and I think that when you are training hard on days that you don't have a hard session you need to be recovering mm. like you know nowadays if I'm like Monday Thursday are my very hard sessions yeah um, and like for example last night my hardest session of the week it was like six times 2.4 kilometers interval training yeah so each each okay. repetition had to be run <laughs> below 740 that's like yeah. what Singaporean men run over six yeah, years over, <laughs> over the whole NS yeah. the whole NS uh, one, yeah, so, one night so yeah I mean th- th- that's the extent of the training I, I have to do so okay, like okay. today I'm not going to go out and play football my body is just okay, like just let it come should be, yeah I need to let it recover I'm but tired but you, you can still go around and do things like appear on interviews podcasts yeah yeah I mean like okay. non-physically okay, okay. I think we better stuff, get higher yeah, quality yeah. snack in our office <laughs> <laughs> this man just ran what like 15 uh, 13 point 14, 14 point 4 kilometers yeah, 14. Yeah, 14. so, so right, that yeah. means in, in, in secondary school you were like sort of just oh eat McDonald's eat McDonald's whatever I mean you hang out with your friends your friends eat friends. McDonald's and then like, you know, I fall sick a couple times a year and then like you know fall sick cannot train yeah, so like yeah, yeah. so like um, and then like you know wasn't taking like enough fruits and veggies you know uh. like basically wasn't what like like it was just a CCA running. Exactly, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And when I go there, I, I, I give my all. Yeah. Like, I train hard. Yeah. But like when things don't go well, I don't stop and think whether it's my fault or whether I should be recovering better yeah. or whatever. Like in a certain yeah. interval session. Not, not training shit, but you had coaches and all. It's just that, that you you yourself in your own mind, you it wasn't... Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I, I remember my, my secondary school, my sec 3, sec 4 coach, Stephen Lim, he was a great guy. It's just that I think he never really sat down and like got through to me mm. like Stephen Quack did. And Stephen Quack, you know, he like... He, Slides and everything like no, this is a graph of super compensation. Like, oh. yeah, you know, like when you train, you actually get unfit for a short period of time. Your body has to recover for it to become see, fitter. You know, like oh. you know, so, yeah. so you're saying someone uh, put it to you through using uh, data and graphs, and that's yeah. what worked for you. Yeah, like, and like it. it's an art also. Like it's not just a science. You know, like okay. like motivation. Like mm. you know, getting someone to change their mindset. Okay. And it, it, it and it really worked out, you know. Like a lot, all of the RI boys, we we ran better when we went to JC because, um, we just took care of like the things outside of running. But was it better, a very yeah. clear maturity decision? also? I guess yeah. Mm. But was it a very clear decision to carry on in cross country as you made the jump from secondary to JC? Because oh, I yeah, yeah. know people who decide I've had enough of the sport or they Correct. change sport. Yeah. I, I was never sick of the sport. In fact. Um, I was making like small jumps so like sec 1, sec 2 my best place was like you know 6 at cross country and then 3rd at um, track and field and then by sec 4 I was like 4th in cross country and 3rd in track and field and I, I really wanted to win national schools before I graduated mm. so, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I was like okay like this coach is supposed to be the best like oh, so he was known to be the best yeah, he's coach known, he's known to be like the mo- the one who oh. produced results so, so like, okay like, just, just buy in and then see uh, see whether we can win it now. and then see but it, it meant that in secondary school, it's not that you weren't uh, motivated to win, la. You you mindset wise, you st- you wanted to win, like uh, you would, like you said, like before you graduate, you wanted to win national schools, all that. Yeah. But you said it needed a complete holistic change of lifestyle in order to reach that next level. Yeah, just just those like, like basically, it's the diet and the recovery. Mm-hmm. Like basically, I think in secondary school, I had the training. But not so much the re- I mean recovery days I was playing football so that's uh, not really the best recovery. Sometimes you even get injured playing football, right? Yes, so yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. And then like diet wise, just could have done it better, like, Yeah, mm. but I think a lot of it is also down to you know maturity and 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 like you know in JC like you know some of us we grow up mm. and we I mean J- JC we don't really play football as often as we did in secondary school mm. anyway. Yeah, like so yeah. A lot of other things. I took academics a bit more seriously in JC also. But how about how about other aspects of JC, JC like? I mean dating and all this kind of thing. Does it? Oh, I shouldn't. Ne- I never dated in JC. Oh, so you just you just like yeah. Fuck my, it, my, you know? Yeah, I had my first girlfriend in maybe like when I was twenty six. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So even throughout uni, like it was more or less focused sports, on sports. Eh? Yeah. Really, really a sacrifice that, that has to be made. I I, I didn't really see it as a sacrifice. Like, I that, I think the opportunity never quite presented itself or so. Mm, okay, um, okay. Yeah, I think. The girls I spent the most time with were my classmates and the girls on my cr- my, my batch. There was only one girl on the cross country team. I see. Yeah. Oh. I see. Yeah. So okay. like, okay, maybe maybe a blessing. Like, if there was a really hot girl on the on the cross country <laughs> team, may- maybe my career could have gone, could have stagnated mm, early sea on. Sea games gold. <laughs> yeah. Sea games gold versus girlfriends. Sea games gold. <laughs> no, but that's interesting because I also wanted to ask the same question because there is a big change when you go from an all boys secondary school when it comes to sports versus yeah. and you go to a uh, school when there's it's co ed 
yeah. just training takes on a different dynamic. Like. Yeah, I mean, I think our coach managed it quite well. So mm. like, like he wasn't, he would never ever say it to your face like, But you know that you go and have a girlfriend or date someone else on the team, you're gonna get fucked like. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. correct. <laughs> but or at least he's, he's not gonna look upon it like very kindly, you know. But even yeah. back then, I know you said that the, a turning point was when you spoke up against athletes having to pay part of the fees to compete in the university games. Yeah, university. But in secondary school, JC, when you look back, were there already instances where you felt guided by your principles and you spoke up when other people were not going to? No, not anything that really comes to mind. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I think secondary school in JC was quite straightforward for me. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't involved in any sort of politics or whatsoever. I was never like appointment holder, and I mean, like I was never, I was never like captain of my team or whatever. I was C division, I was captain, but I mean, uh, 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 you don't really do anything last mm. sec two as a captain. Um, yeah, then JC, I I wasn't involved in any of these like student council yeah. or anything. I I hear that there's a lot of like politics that goes on on student council. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wasn't involved, so I didn't care. Uh, yeah, so I guess my the first time I was really exposed to like politics and stuff was was actually when I was in NS because mm. there is a good deal of politics that goes on in NS. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but just just so do you yeah. look back uh, on those years in secondary school in JC and feel like you missed out on anything or is this is exactly how you would have wanted it to be, lah? I I I guess I guess so. I, I'm not quite sure what I missed out on. Um, mm. I mean, you have to experience something to know you're missing out mm. on whether it's good or bad, right? I yeah. I don't think I really missed out on anything. I, JC really went by in quite a flash, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. For a lot of people, it's it's basically uh, you're preparing for university, like you just study mm. very hard and everything. Yeah. But just interesting because I think a lot of uh, parents these days they want to encourage their kids to you know pursue their dreams and all. But they might not realize the kind of sacrifices it might entail in terms of uh, you know a lot of other things that you have to give mm. up la. I think hearing from you directly like what life was like is very eye opening uh, to, mm. to, to to understand that is basically yeah, that mindset change that that a lot of people probably it comes to them too late in life uh. Yeah. But you're also already at 15, 16, you already had that already. But I, it's a bit of, t- honestly, it was a bit of tunnel vision. La. You know, like, you know, social, I mean, like, I had friends, but I, I wasn't socializing a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, like, I wasn't yeah. going to house parties or any kind of right, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess you can, but like, you know, when you're dealing with freaking A-levels, which is like a um, mammoth task in itself, and then you want to like win at sports, which is another mammoth task in itself, your plate yeah. is full. La. And That's I wasn't, true. I wasn't the smartest dude. Like, I, I couldn't like, Read, read it one time and then score an A so like you need to put an effort on that side and then it comes to like sports I mean endurance running is endurance running I need yeah. to train and but weren't you probably. so too exhausted to study at certain points you just fall asleep while reading it well, that, well that's also another part of the equation like you got to get enough sleep so that you uh, can pay attention in class mm. and you can um, and then we don't wake up late uh. <laughs> remember in JC yeah, yeah, you yeah, wake correct. up quite early to go to school yeah yeah. so um, so yeah you have to that side also has to be balanced for you. Like you have to get, go to bed by like 10, 10 30, uh, 11 at the latest, so you can be up by 6 30, 7, have enough sleep, and then go to class and not fall asleep there. Because you fall asleep in class, then the whole cycle starts again. Like you know, you miss out on, you miss out on certain lessons, and then yeah. you have to catch up yourself. Yeah, it's not a good situation to be in. Like. So, so, you know, like let's say fast forward to today, you looking back, how, what are some of the, the things that you, you, you have changed since those, those years in JC and uni? How have you changed like, your values, your principles, or how has anything gotten stronger? I think maybe I was a lot more easily swayed when I was in JC. Mm. I mean, like, I, I was a lot, put it this way, I was less less discerning about people. Mm. Yeah, so there were certain people I looked up to in JC, and then they um, pr- proved to be not so good people. Lah. Mm. Um, I, and then, of course, and then once you notice that, then you start to be a lot more, more, more discerning. Okay. Uh, I can give you some examples. In, in JC, I think the good, the guys people were looking up to when I was in JC, this 0809, mm. was like Lance Armstrong. Yes. Mm. yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. And he turned out to be a. Complete pu- fraud. Yeah, yeah, he's a complete yeah. fraud and a bully, la, you know? He was like yeah. suing people for defamation because people were accusing him of doping. And. And he was doping, but they were they just didn't have evidence to to prove it. And yeah. like when it's defamation, you know, like 
it, the burden of proof is on the on, on the maker of the statements, the defendant, to prove that whatever he's saying is like justified. And yeah. like, so Lance Armstrong actually successful sued people on a number of occasions before he was outed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And then like all those people who lost their permission suits to him are now try, are now try, I had to go, go and claw it back from him after correct, he was busted. Correct. Yeah. So Lance, I mean like like really open your eyes to like not to say I idolize him or anything, but I did read his book. Mm. Yeah, I, I read his book and like you know I thought wow this guy is like. And he is he is a hard worker. He is tough, but I mean he didn't do it naturally, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that's uh, and and he was not not the best person when it came to like uh, values either. Mm. Yeah. So, I, I and I think that, but then you also grow. Then you realize that, you think about things a bit more. Like all of them were on something mm. during that time, you know. Mm. So like then the question, is like is it fair to hold him? Uh, like say he's the guilty one when everyone else was doping and mm. he just happened to be the best and like because of I mean I, I guess it's also how he handled it like you know mm. like trying to crush people's careers for yeah. like for like threatening them and, yeah. and with lawsuits and all that kind of stuff I think those was what made him a monster la. yeah mm. so, so so Lance Armstrong was like someone that you looked up to as an athlete and and you hope to you know. Um, recreate I mean like have a career that is as successful and all I mean it is inspirational like, right yeah, like yeah, you yeah. know like endurance athlete like works hard like one don't know how many no, they had cancer cancer and they had that, that everyone was wearing a lift strong, strong. Band. Yeah, I was wearing a lift strong yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah and then and then uh, and then like you know comes back from cancer like wins the Tour de France seven times or whatever yeah, and yeah. then I mean that's that's the start I mean some, but sometimes you also like now, you, now you get to see when a story is too good to be true. <laughs> sometimes there's mm. things you need to be more discerning about, mm. correct, Yeah, correct. yeah. So I mean, that was the fantastic example. Mm. Uh, in track and field, there've been a number of like athletes who have been caught for for drugs, and mm. I think those were also like serve as warning signs that don't take everything at surface value. Be more, be more discerning. Be more inquisitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But I also think the ignorance is bliss, lah. So <laughs> sometimes when you don't ask so many questions, you can enjoy. I mean, now when I watch track and field at the Olympics or whatever, and I see like incredible performances, rather than going wow, I'm I I start like crunching the numbers and like the, the, do things add up. Like wow, this mm. is rate of progression in the last five years. Which country is he from? Uh, uh, I see, I see. So it's like you you can't enjoy it as much as a you can't enjoy it as much as just as a. A Correct. sporting feat. You mm. think about the science yeah. behind yeah, it. Yeah, once, once you see, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Really. Once, mm. once you see how nasty things can be, you, you really you can't, can't you can't unsee it. Correct. correct yeah, and yeah. then, and then like I mean, naturally, I mean, over the years, I've been I I've, I've been witness to certain things in mm. in the governing of our sport that I yeah. that I feel are extremely wrong and not right. And I spoke mm. up on, on yeah. a number of occasions and and um. And and I had to fight wars like because the other, the other side goes on defensive obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you go to my blog, you can see lah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so of I, I think yeah. also to clarify, I think uh, a lot of people always, uh, you know, they say you know, a sports person shouldn't talk so much, just go and perform, just go and run and do your thing lah. But but uh, I think uh, there's been a lot of instances where you've come forward and you know said things that you're not comfortable about, whether it's with the sports administrative bodies or what lah. And and what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have? People meaning online commentators, and all have of you Because they say a lot of things. Oh, he doesn't do anything besides just run. Why he must talk so much? All this kind of thing. I mean, to those people, we're we're not dogs lah. We we don't just run because for your entertainment. Mm. We are human beings, and you know, and this is in direct conflict with the value that if you see something that's wrong, you mm. should say something about it. Yeah. Mm. So why is it different for athletes? Why should we just run? Mm. I don't understand, you know. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't really understand why, why people feel they have the right to tell athletes, like, "Oh, just play your sport and shut up." Mm. We're not, we're not performers. We're not performing. For, we're not your performing dogs, lah. You know? mm. Right? We're, we're not there to to please you mm. and and not speak about it. I mean, if you you don't like what we have to say, you, know, you don't have to listen. Mm. Um, you can pay attention to to whatever you want to pay attention to. I mean, I'm I'm gonna continue performing. I'm gonna continue like winning. I'm I'm gonna continue like. Setting up for what is right And if I don't do it Who's going to do it Like mm-hmm. I, I am probably The most influential voice In track and field here mm. uh, But Yeah I can see Where they're coming from Like you know Sometimes it's also because In Singapore No one dares to speak out And like you know Because yeah. I've spoken up Sometimes the authorities Try and make an example Out of myself mm. So it puts Pressure on the other athletes Not to say anything Like I know a lot of athletes Who know a lot of things That are wrong Like mm. I know friends 
who are you know, SEA Games gold medalists or, or medalists and they see things that are wrong but they're not going to speak up about it because they don't want to deal with the with, with, mm. with, with the bite back yeah. I see I see yeah. do, they, do they have any almost sentiments towards you like Ruyang can you just keep quiet so that we can all just perform and focus on our sports because ultimately like what you said by you speaking up it kind of puts the pressure on them to speak up well it doesn't put pressure on them to speak up but when I speak up and and uh, and like I'm not saying the authorities or whatever when and when people usually uh, the people I speak up about like feel threatened they try and clamp down on me so that sends a message to the other athletes like you know it's, mm. a, it's a very chilling message like you like you just you don't speak up like mm. you, you end up like like getting like um you end up like Rayon where he has to like uh, we're, we're doing all these things to him but to me it's like you know I know I can take all this lah. Mm. Like, and I know that if what I'm saying is true, it will come out one day. Like it's it's not gonna you can't hide it forever. But mm. it's not how many of these athletes like want to go through that. Mm-hmm. How many of these athletes have the yeah. mental fortitude or courage to go through that? Yeah, I right. think I think they know. But they they don't ask me to. If anything, they say it wrong. Like no, like we we really respect you for what you do. We will never ever do it. Mm. Yeah. So they are. I think they feel grateful that someone is doing it, especially mm, when it comes okay. to like you know like. Like funding problems or like governance problems and stuff like that, which I mean, like the previous SA MC had quite a few uh, instances where they were doing things wrongly, and I and yeah. all this is on my blog, uh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm, but, not, I'm not taking it down. Uh. But, why, why do you think? Um, I mean, I'm just coming from my my own a uh, bit more layperson kind of perspective, like You know, yeah. Why do you think that to some people it comes across as this guy is very arrogant? Like, do you think it's in the way you you say it or what? That that maybe some people like are rubbed the wrong way or or anything? Because everything you're saying it sounds like exactly like oh, I mean it's good like you know you're bringing up things that need to be brought up and and then people are being clamped down. Or, but but when when I see the reaction online is is sometimes it can be quite negative and a lot of people say arrogant and mm. all these kind of things. I think okay. So my answer to that is twofold. One is that um, arrogance is a word that's very easily thrown around. Mm. I mean, it's been used on our ministers. It's been used on our opposition politicians. It's been used on athletes. It's been used on Joseph Schooling. It's been mm. used on Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm-hmm. It's a word that is a very subjective word, and it's a word that is very easy. Like if I if I if someone is performing well, and I want to find one thing to pick on him, arrogant is the easiest. It's really the easiest, easiest thing. Mm-hmm. That being said, I think some athletes have successfully like like distance themselves from any sort of arrogance. I think mm. that um, the best marathoner in the world, Eliud Kipchoge is a friend of mine. Like he, mm. com- he comes across as a very, very humble person on social media. Yeah. But I can tell you that he's a very, very simple person and he doesn't manage his own social media. Like this is managed by a, a, mm. a PR team. Mm. I see, I see. Yeah, he just runs. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. So that's, that's one. Uh, two is that to a certain degree, you can't run away from this if you are at the top of your game. Mm. I mean, how many people have caught Ronaldo and Messi arrogant? Mm-hmm. I think f- in tennis, perhaps Federer has managed to distance himself a bit from that arrogant like. But but you, you can you can still when he does his post match interviews, there is a little air of arrogance in the stuff he says like. Yeah 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 yeah. No, there is, yeah exactly there. and and like you know you need that level of confidence to play at the top of your game correct, for correct. I mean like you 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 go into a competition you are very meek. Yeah, like, everyone's, gonna, right? yeah. <laughs> you, everyone's gonna walk all over you. So like when I go into a competition, especially when I go to the Sea Games, and Singapore has no history uh, in in like long distance running. Like yep. to win a long distance like gold medal in the Sea Games is like you're really breaking the 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 mold. Like mm-hmm. we've only won three gold medals in the entire history of the Sea Games and marathon. That's 2013, 2015, 2017. Mm. Basically, mm-hmm. like mock and then myself twice. Yeah. No one else has done it, and, and and that's for a good reason. Even Mark at at his heyday, people were calling him arrogant because like he mm. wasn't doing things the traditional like, like what everyone else did. I think he was, and people were saying stuff like, "Oh, oh, Mark thinks he can handle like 150k a week. This guy is very arrogant." I mean, what the fuck? Like, if he mm. wants to train 150, 160k a week, that's his own choice. Mm. Why? why is it yeah. arrogant in a yeah. way that he chooses to train in a way that you don't think is is right? Uh, for me, it's a little bit different. I think that um. I, I think to a certain extent I've seen a lot of shit I can't be fucked to be polite about it so like mm. when I when I see something I call it out uh, the tone I use can be uh, can be seen as like loud arrogant aggressive whatever it might be but I mean that's mm. just that's just how I phrase it la. so I think if I could do one thing differently I could maybe like uh, look at a choice of words and I think there's there's always a way of doing something better so I'm humble mm. enough to recognize that no one is perfect 
myself included I'm far from being a perfect human being mm-hmm. uh, but I can I can see what I can do to you know phrase things better and maybe get the same message across without without uh, passing off as that um, arrogant yeah but, 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 at, but at the same time I also I also really enjoy guys like Zlatan Ibrahimovic mm-hmm. you know who like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he, people think people people accuse him of being arrogant and he just takes yeah, it and owns yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. so like I, I think it's so funny yeah, yeah. yeah so. But but was there a particular incident or series of incidents that made you think that okay maybe I can use different words to convey the same message um, not really no <laughs> no <laughs> um well, I guess. Okay, for example, this two point four kilometer challenge, mm, right? Mm, mm. I think that, on the grand scheme of things, it's a great success. Yeah. The people who were saying it was arrogant like, and everything, but but I mean that was kind of the angle we were going for anyway. It was mm. like you know an open challenge, like like come, mm. like if, if you can you can do it, come out. Like I'll reward you if you can do it. Yeah. That's. You can't really like challenge the whole world without having or not the whole world, but you can't really challenge the whole country without that sounding like that's so edgy, like, yeah, right? with some, mm, without mm. coming out as a little bit edgy and a little bit arrogant. And there's yeah. some things you can't say without sounding. There's no way to say something like that without sounding arrogant. Yeah, yeah. and no, I mean, the, I think the Channel News Asia article said that basically there's no point in the last twenty years have we been talking about two point four. As a thing, or track and field, yeah. Or track and field. Everyone talks about 2.4 like ah, see, and yeah, now yeah. it's like oh, I've got this challenge, <laughs> this challenge, got this challenge. It's seven minutes, seven minutes. You know, it's and just like yeah. in people's and consciousness. And even if there are people who say, "How what kind of challenge?" The fact is, they are talking about it, lah. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, lah. So, like I said, if if our sport was doing that well, and I could just quietly be a part of it and make a living off of it, and like you know, like win fans off of it, I didn't even have to say a single word. Don't you think I'd rather do that? Like, mm. there's a lot less to do on my part. What mm. things are being done properly, I just need to do my part. And then we do, and then and then and then both I both I both see like yeah, solid. But the problem is that things here are not being done properly. Like mm. and that is why no one gives a rat's ass about track and field in Singapore. To to be specific, do you do you are you talking about, let's say you know supporting via sponsorship or you know just I just, general I think marketing? Just the marketing of the sport, the administration I think has been subpar for many years. Like mm. I mean that's why maybe people hear about Singapore like, ah Singapore sports no future yeah. one lah. You know like. It's very very negative sentiment. Like, yeah, yeah. name me one sport in Singapore that's had positive sentiment. I'm trying to think of one. I can't. Positive maybe, sentiment in terms of in terms of like when you mentioned this sport to Singaporeans, mm, they get excited yeah. and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. swimming uh, for a while, Swim, uh. swimming for a yeah. while, for a when, while. Yeah, maybe yeah. 2016 when Joseph. This year the Paralympian swimming, uh. mm. Paralympian swimming. But even but, then, yeah. it's like, oh, how come they're not getting as much oh, as yeah, the? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like, <laughs> it's still pol- I mean, it's still it's uh, tainted almost with this, huh? Why is some sort of social inequality, like yeah. some yeah. inequality there. Yeah, and then and then swimming, like sorry to say this because I'm I'm friends with Joseph and I and I love the guy. Mm. I mean, even Joseph, people accuse him of being arrogant, right? Yes. Oh, you're arrogant. That's why you lose. I mean, that's yeah. not the reason he lost. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he lost because he wasn't in the shape he was five years ago. But yeah. uh, there's nothing to do with arrogance. But yeah, this is just a very convenient excuse, la, or a very convenient accusation to label someone with. And like Joseph was the recipient of a lot of like nasty like netizen comments yeah, mm. yeah. and like this like, we, we, we're not even treating our only like Olympic champion with the respect I think he basically deserves mm. yeah so and then like, swimming became a joke at the Olympics unfortunately because of because of stuff like that so so I think the, so for everyone to be talking about track and field right like I would take that any day and if I if that if the side effect of this is that some people think I'm arrogant like I can live with that yeah because I'd rather mm. live with that than have then continue doing what I do every day and have no one notice track and field at all. Correct, correct. Mm. Ball, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I'll totally admit, when the first thing, when it first was announced, this 2.4 challenge thing, and then the 700 chicken rice thing came out, <laughs> I was like, what kind of what kind of reward is that? Like, you, know, mm. you know? But over time, I think, um, I mean, you, you, I, we did the podcast and all, yeah. but over time, what I've realized is that basically you are, one by one, you are getting people interested uh, in the sport, uh, in, in the sport, which is not something that typical people are interested but we all know about 2.4 everyone has run 2.4 but we never looked at it as like a challenge or a sport that you can win something and all that even so, Uncle Lim Uncle Lim also <laughs> yeah. Uncle Lim also Uncle Lim the sports massage everything <laughs> yeah. yeah so I mean yeah. if if 
step by step you're getting hey, what, what, t- 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 tell us what's going on there. is it like these sponsors are one by one reaching out to you and saying hey this is interesting can I jump on board or? yes yes oh, okay. actually so not one by one initially it was like 10 at one go oh, like really? I opened my inbox or open Facebook and then there are like 10 new sponsors who just announced that they want and, to and come on board are, you are negotiating with them yeah yeah yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. exactly exactly and like I mean like okay I need to be very, very careful I don't want to sound like oh you know I did all this to get me I'm so great like like it's really down to the sponsors. Like I'm very grateful for them. I'm mm. very humbled by how they came on board and they were like, "Oh, we like what you're doing. Mm. We want to support." I mean, of course, the negative way to see it is a lot of them wanted to jump on the bandwagon. Mm. Oh. Like there was nothing else they could jump on, so they jumped on the 2.4k hype. Mm. I mean, it it, it went vi- it went very viral. Like yeah, <laughs> it reached yeah. like over a million people on Facebook alone, not counting other social media platforms. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it it really went super viral. People were brands were jumping on board. People were getting excited. People were talking, and I think the seven hundred chicken rice that was. I think that really helped the sponsorships take off. Like mm. so, a big thank you to that da- was the, the, the boss <laughs> Daniel uh-huh. Tan. Seven hundred chicken rice. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it was just the ridiculousness <laughs> of of the imagery of seven hundred packets of chicken rice, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> that and there's no other sporting event in the world where you win seven hundred packets of chicken <laughs> rice. <laughs> So the it was just true. Rice. <laughs> true uh, yeah, yeah. So I think that's that and then mothership wrote an article about it because yeah, you know there's yeah. such a mothership type yeah, like yeah, headline, right? Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. like yeah. like set win have seven hundred chicken rice at two point five event, I'm like, this is going to take off and then boom, like yeah. it, it really like took off. That article reached maybe half a million people and then and then I think sponsors realized that hey, we better come on this, you know, like fear of missing out or, mm, or, yeah, or yeah, like, yeah. like take take advantage of it. So, so yeah, we have everything from fish and chips restaurants to to like cryptocurrency companies to um, like private donors. Mm. Everyone came on board la, and then like wealth management firms mm. um, and, then, and then like some of, them, some of them would be like, I think beauty, was there any beauty firms? I don't know. It's all on my website. I, mm. I, 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 and I and right now everyone. the race was supposed to be this weekend, 10th of October. Yes. But because of the restrictions, it yes. has been pushed back to... Yeah. To November 13th to 14th. Okay. And how many people have signed up so far? Well, Two thousand, like three thousand. Is it? I I think three thousand people have signed up total, but only three hundred people will be on ground doing the race. Okay. We would love to have all three thousand at the track, but you know, social distancing. Mm. We can only hold five people per race. Okay. So, so that's the problem. So you know, it was a very polarizing uh thing for better or worse, and even over the years, whenever you have spoken out, there will always be detractors. There will always be these these comments online that are negative. But do these comments ever get to you? I guess. Uh, because I've rationalized in my own head that they will always be haters. No lah, they don't get to me. But sometimes, you know, when they say stuff that's not true, mm. I mean, like, I'm a person that like, I believe very strongly in integrity and truth. So I see yeah. people making up stuff and it's completely untrue. Like, I will have no choice but to rebut lah. Correct, correct. I mean, like, no, this is not true. You're talking nonsense. And, if, and most of the time, it's a like fake account or, or, or what lah. Then, Faceless. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I mean nowadays I can't be bothered la. Like, like uh, these people are not worth my time. So if there's if you're, if you're saying something that's not true, yeah. I'll, I'll just delete the comment and like my, my even my even like block the guy. No, no point in engaging them like, You know sometimes. Can I, can I just yeah. clarify something? Because uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, one of your proud, proudest moments was hearing the Singapore national anthem being played while you were po- at, on the podium, la, right? Yeah. So I mean, over the years you've gone through a lot of uh, also conflict with like administrative organizations of Singapore athletes uh, uh, athletics and all um, so do you feel that same sense of pride being Singaporean representing Singapore and, and, and everything given everything that you've been through you know the struggles and all like like what do you feel or do you is there a bit of a bittersweet kind of taste to it uh, that's a very good question I would say that end of the day I'm still proud to stand on the podium and represent Singapore and like if a national anthem is played I'll still feel a sense of pride mm. obviously less so because you know like it, diminishing returns right the first time it's like wow like you know this yeah, is course, such yeah, a yeah. No, novel feeling but I you know like the next C games the next C games so I've won two C games mm. I would say the yeah. f- I actually had a much better second C games than my first because mm. I, mm. I won by a much bigger margin and the guys I beat were much better than the guys I beat in the first C games so yeah. like the, my second C games is probably the best marathon I've ever run mm. um, but yeah, lah, I I would say that the first one is the most shock. Sure. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you know, like the current Singapore athletics management, I think they're okay. They're, they're okay. really okay. Compared to okay. the last bunch of clowns, right? This bunch is okay. <laughs> okay. Um, 
yeah, this bunch took over, this, this team took over in 2020. Yeah, much, big improvement, lah, I must say. Mm. But, you know, when it comes to... End of the day, I'm representing Singapore. I'm not representing Singapore Athletics. I'm not representing, like, these, these, these managers, these, yeah. these management clowns or, 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 or whatnot. I'm representing, like, you know, the, the country on a whole. Mm. And I, I mean, like, I've, I've grown up here. I've lived here. Yeah. I've, I've, I've had opportunities here that I may not have, ha- have had if I had grown up in a less, like, privileged country. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, I think um, no... It's easy to see it from a negative way, but I, I mean, like, I always try and see the best in the, whatever situation we're placed in. Mm. And yeah, I'm still proud to represent Singapore when given the opportunity, of course. So, yeah. so you know all the 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 controversies, yeah, like with administration, with um, the the occasional de- hate comment and all that. How much does that play into your motivation to keep pushing yourself, like? Because right now you own four records, right? Mm. Five thousand, ten thousand, half marathon, and marathon. Um, I'm I'm guessing that you're not gonna stop there. You're gonna want to better your records. But is it all just internal motivation or pride, or does the the you know the the, the tension with the authorities or the history drive you also? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to very simply I want to be better than before. Mm-hmm. I, I and I'm not saying that the other aspect doesn't play into it. Of course, it's damn shook lah. You know when, like, um, like the in 2017 I had protested against the like the the, the National Olympic Council's like sponsorship rules. Basically, they had this they had this like really hip like heavy-handed rule where two weeks before the games you couldn't post about your sponsors mm-hmm. one week after the games you can post about your sponsors and then, and then and then you can only post about SNOC sponsors and I'm just mm-hmm. like hey like you're not the one supporting us to train for the games you know like yeah. we've got our own private sponsors and they're not gonna like if they're not gonna like see their brand out there during this most like busy period mm-hmm. then what are they supporting us for so I mean and then, and then and they, tra- they threaten to take me off the team and all that kind of stuff uh, so of course when I won and I didn't have to shove it in their face that like people were doing it for me. So <laughs> they were, they were, yeah, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was quite shook. Um, but you know, I think com- when it comes down to it, like for example, like I, I think you, you correctly said I have four national records. The 2.4 actually got added to the Singapore Athletics like as mm. a nas- list of records as a national best. It's not an mm. official track and field distance, but it's like listed as a national best. So that's what I'm trying to better at next month's challenge. Mm-hmm. At the end of this month, I'm trying to qualify for the Asian Games by racing the national championships in the 10,000 meters. So mm. I need like 31.44, um, yeah, which no, no Singaporean has run in Singapore yet because our heat and humidity has made it such, it's quite hard to run 31 minutes in Singapore. So I'm trying to do that. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, intrinsic motivation. Like, you know, what, what have I done so far? I'm enjoying training. Like, I'm going to push myself a little bit better, push myself a little bit harder. And then, and then that, and at the end of the day, it comes down to my own sense of fulfillment. Mm. Anything else is a bonus. Mm. Yeah. So then, I like, for me, it's, it's, it's so difficult to square the fact that you are pushing all these lines and you so openly accepted these biscuits I offered you earlier which have no <laughs> nutritional value at all zero zero in Absolutely. fact it's probably detrimental it's probably taken <laughs> off like half a second <laughs> but how, how do you how do you square that how do you live your life because everybody has heard stories of Cristiano Ronaldo being so militant yeah, yeah. but is it is it a struggle for you or is it very easy for you I, I I think it's quite easy I mean I'm not I'm no Ronaldo put it this way Like I look up to Ronaldo a lot because he's 36 years old and he's still playing at the highest level so like once in a while I read like what he's doing, like you know his his habits and stuff, and I apply it to I apply it to my own life as well, you know, like mm. recovery and stuff like that. But at the same time, I'm not. I think he he is excessively like um type A, mm. put it this way. Like he's he, he's quite extreme, like. I think Patrice ever wrote, wrote in his yeah. book before. He said, "Don't go to Ronaldo's house for lunch. He serves you salad and water." You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. and then and then ever was saying like. You no, know, like after lunch, he asks you to, to go to the garden kick and like around, right? kick around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like, what are we doing? Are we training or are we hanging out? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. for every Ronaldo, there's a Messi, and Messi for a long time he was he loved like uh, this chocolate biscuits and mm. Pepsi, and yeah. like, oh, Messi really? Messi is a crap diet apparently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. but if you want to compare numbers, like Messi, Messi is just as good as Ronaldo, and many will argue even better yeah. as a as a yeah. as a footballer. So there are many ways to do it. Like at the end of the day, you figure out what works for you. Mm. Um. Ronaldo's longevity is something that I look up to, and I, I, and like, and like, I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I had biscuits, but, but <laughs> oh shit, sorry <laughs> man. <laughs> but you, I mean, you have eaten with me. You know that I'm not like hyper, like 
uh, hyper focused on what I can and cannot eat. Yeah, hyper militant about the yeah, dietary yeah. restrictions. Yeah, right? I just less, less than Harish. Uh. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I put in a lot of effort into training already. Like, I like to enjoy yeah. my, self, my, my life outside of training. Like, after, after this, by the way, I'm going for happy hour. So. Like, oh, happy oh, hour. Oh, oh, wow. It's Friday, right? <laughs> yeah, correct. Wow. Here yeah. we are thinking that you're going to go train for another yeah. like 5, 2.4 kilometers. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You, you let off steam. Yeah, I yeah, thought the hard yeah. stop was because he's going back to training. <laughs> he's going drinking. Now he's training something else. La. His beer tolerance. Training, yeah, the liver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like, I'm in that sense. I'm not. I'm. 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 A lot, I'm, a lot, I'm a, I would say that many athletes, including myself, are a lot more normal than people realize. Mm. Like you know, sometimes people will hear, "Hey, can you eat chicken rice?" Uh, you know, like I mean, yeah, 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 like, yeah. We are mm. a lot more normal than people realize. Uh. The only thing, uh, the only thing that sets us apart is really the the training and the amount of effort that we put into put into the sport mm. yeah. so so you know just now you were you were saying that i mean as an athlete and especially athletes who have high profiles like yourself and of course uh, joseph schooling um that you are always going to get comments like because mm. your your work is essentially public you know people working in a corporate job they do powerpoint is a shitty powerpoint nobody will give a fuck like, right? yeah yeah but you have a shitty race everybody comments oh everyone yeah. sees it yeah everyone yeah. sees taxpayer, it so, taxpayer money taxpayer spent money training. and all that <laughs> so how that's bullshit uh, by the way I, I take zero <laughs> taxpayers money <laughs> Joseph takes a bit uh, maybe but <laughs> he qualifies for it right like uh, that's the scheme he qualifies for it fine yeah, yeah. yeah. so so yeah so exactly uh, the comments are, but but some comments are yeah very subjective uh, but do you think as a national athlete you there's certain criticism that is unjustified or can people criticize people like you and Joseph Schooling in a way that okay they are they have the right to I believe in freedom of speech, so everyone is free to criticize anybody. But yeah. that, that doesn't make you right, lah. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. So, I think uh, I believe in a free marketplace of ideas where the best ideas surface at the top. Mm. Yeah. And in a true democracy, we all engage in like freedom of speech and and freedom of ideas exchange and freedom of discussion. Mm. And but when it comes to like J- Joseph schooling, I, like you really see the maturity of our of our commenters, lah. You know, mm. like. Instead of commenting something like constructive, like for example, like oh, like his, his for example, a constructive a constructive comment could be something like, "Hey man, like tough luck, better luck next time." I think that you no, know, maybe the the coming back to Singapore wasn't the best move in terms of like training environment. The performance started to tail off here for the next Olympics. Maybe you can go back to the states and like try. That's a constructive comment, and I think that this this all based on facts. Nothing too wrong with mm. that. A retarded comment would be something like. Eat too much Milo cow la, This boy <laughs> See la, So fat now Cannot swim And There are a lot of people yeah, Commenting this Yeah A lot And all these A lot of them Are boomer uncles Or what la, yeah, I click on I mean once in a while like, I see stupid comments like, I, oh, yeah. I just I want to see What's the demographic Of idiots Making these comments I click on mm. it Either fake account yeah. Yeah. I, Sorry to say la, Very often it's a boomer la. Mm. Um but then you know, it, but online space is getting very toxic, like you know, like TikTok is it's a very toxic platform, la. Yeah, I I realized yeah. I have friends on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. The comments you get there from people who have fake accounts are really quite bad, la, You know, mm. and you think the TikTok is for the younger crowd, but mm. I I'm not sure whether it's like the younger crowd who who thinks they can say things and say whatever they want, or yeah. is it like you know boomers creating like some of these fake accounts mm. to go after people. Yeah, so I mean, I've already given you one example of a constructive comment, one example of yeah. a, of, of a yeah. just just out to just a malicious comment out to like, like it's almost as if they are not happy with their own lives and they feel that they're going to put down just schooling just to feel better about themselves for for the day. Okay, okay. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, so those I mean, are the comments that I feel are not fair, yeah. So I I guess the the better athlete you become, you are not going to be able to run away from public spotlight. Oh no uh, way, right? no way. So no. so what do you make when you see? Um, instances of say you know Naomi Osaka taking wanting to take a step back and getting so much flack um, because there's also some people would say that, that but that's part of the job what? and I think that is where it's polarizing la. and and if you're that sort of elite athlete yeah it, it just feels like you never used to hear people say that in the past so newer athletes saying that is it a sign of the times or is it something to do with the way the the younger generation ha- has grown up in or the social influences Oh, I mean, I, n- I didn't think any less of Naomi Osaka for it, to be honest. I mean, she made a choice. I think she had to pay a fine for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think it's worth it, pay the fine and, pay the, pay the fine and go. Lo. Mm. I mean, like, she knew what she was getting herself into. Yeah. And to be frank, like, the publicity she got from it was probably worth the fine. Like, mm. I, I don't know how much the fine was, but, like, she got 
worldwide global media coverage for whatever the, the fine was. And I can tell yeah. you that it's <laughs> you're looking at eyeballs like per, per dollar, like it's 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 worth it, it's, she got she got the best bang for her buck. Like, of course I'm not I'm not saying that was her intention. Mm. I do think that she was definitely like having her own state of health at mind. And I don't think that she expected it to go viral to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um because I think that would, that had the opposite effect. Like she didn't want people to talk about her. Yeah, ended up the whole exactly, world talking yeah, about her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have done it, lah. You know, I would have attend, I mean, I've, I've attended like press conferences in my life. I in many press conferences in my life. I enjoy press conferences, and if I if I was ever faced with a stupid question, like I know how to handle it, lah. I mean, I mm-hmm. I'll probably give a uh, an, an answer. I think that Kimi Raikkonen is one of my favorite, like. Um, uh, sports, sports stars when it comes yeah. to interviews because yeah. you ask him a stupid question he'll just give it to you oh really yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he was just like he was just like <sighs> and then he'll walk away or he'll, like, he'll, yeah. he'll say that's a stupid question or whatever mm. uh, yeah. yeah. so so when you look back at I mean you, the things that you have done in the public eye and all do you look back with like okay everything is a learning opportunity or some things you look back you're like mm, I shouldn't have said that or how, how do you approach that because right now you do post a lot mm. and like even for me I don't post much on Facebook because I enjoy talking on a podcast because mm. I feel my thoughts can evolve as I'm talking. Whereas Facebook, you put it out there, it's it's almost set in stone. La. But do you do you uh, do you reflect a lot on what you post? I I don't reflect a lot to be honest mm. uh, on what I post because to me it's a lot of what I post is factual. A lot of what I post is like just reports on like how training is going or like mm. a, a photo with a with a funny quote or or, or whatever. Um, if I were to reflect, I could probably find, like, I could probably find ten different ways to improve every post that I've done. Mm. But I don't have time to do that. I <laughs> no, I'm I'm not writing a research paper. Yeah. It's, it's social media. Um, it's, it's just the nature of what we're writing. So, um, I would say that no, no regrets for how I've conducted this. I think I think like if anything, it's helped me build a career in the sport. Like you can't really build a career nowadays in sports or like in marketing or whatever without social media presence like, you know mm. we're not we're not in the 1980s where where you know the footballers didn't have Instagram yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Correct, yeah. Correct, now correct. after every game you must post on Instagram and share your thoughts yeah right? yeah like three <laughs> points today yeah, <laughs> yeah. on to the next yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so so and, and, and I mean like and sponsors they expect you to post X number of times a year you know mm. like it's very often it's in your contract mm. yeah yeah so yeah so it's an interesting world we live in nowadays I think that uh, we as a society and like the government and laws are constantly adapting to keep up with the power that the internet and social media has. Mm. Um, it's it's interesting to see how things develop. Like for example, like and and for us, you know, I think we're still young we're of, of the age where we can like uh, like adapt to like new things. Like mm. I, I I actually think I actually quite pity the the ministers who are having to keep, try and keep up with social media and they're like, oh shit, like social yeah. media is so powerful. How do we counter this? Yeah. Oh, POFMA, la. how about this law of POFMA? And then yeah. that's, that's mm. really how POFMA evolved. It was like mm. a way to arrest like falsehoods like in the butt. Mm. Um, I mean, this is a very controversial law. I mean, we're getting shit. For, we look like shit in the Western world, by the way. Like yeah. they, they think that we are exactly. m- muzzling our, our, our own people. Yeah, I mean, I see, I see, I see why the government wanted to Im- implement POFMA, but I also think, also to a certain, I mean, like to a large extent, I feel, if we really believe we are educated people, if we really mm. believe that you know we pride ourselves on our education system, then a free marketplace of ideas should allow the best ideas to rise to the top. Mm. Yeah, so mm. we can we can't say we have the best education system, but yet we need to like muzzle things yeah. that we we muzzle, muzzle certain people or like you know spoon feed people what the truth is. You know, like yeah, yeah that, that's my opinion. Like this is actually an essay I wrote for law school yesterday. Mm. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> yeah. So so then. What is next for, for, for you in the coming weeks or months or years that you have yeah. in the works? Well, uh, next few years, like next year there's Commonwealth Games, Asian Games, trying mm. to qualify for both. Um, I, I actually got selected for the Asian Indoor Championships. This is mm. in Kazakhstan. Whoa, right, so uh, you guys know what Kazakhstan looks like. My first thought was like Borat. Borat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful country. It's a beautiful yeah. country. I yeah. mean, like I'm going to the capital, so that's in uh, Nor Sultan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I googled it. It looks like the most futuristic city. I'm like, really? this does not look like what I saw in Borat. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Because 
<laughs> All I know is like it's it's landlocked, so there's a lot of hills and mountains. Ah, yeah. But I didn't yeah. know about the yeah, yeah it's a very futuristic looking capital. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, but when I'm going, it's gonna be like negative ten to negative twenty degrees Celsius. Like it's so cold in February. I didn't realize. <laughs> and you're gonna be running in, oh, indoors. Oh, indoors. indoors. Oh, that's why yeah. it's indoors. Yeah, like, indoor champs. Yeah. So like thousand five and uh, one thousand five hundred meters and three thousand meters. I'm gonna try and break the national record for both oh. uh, indoors. It, I would say that um I can do it, but also because like we rarely ever compete indoors. So I think those mm. records are not 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 like they're kind of soft to begin with okay, yeah not yeah. like outdoors where we run it like, yeah. like okay. very often but yeah I mean that's the disclaimer but I think I'm capable of breaking both records there and then and then we'll we'll see what, we'll see what happens and but, but are those national records the outdoor records on your radar also the 1,005 and 3,000 so the 3,000 yes the 3,000 for sure that's on my that's on my to do list so like whatever I'm doing for this 2.4 actually is a really nice build up because I'm trying to raise the 2.4 at the pace that's required to break the 3k record oh, okay. so if I can run 2.4 at that pace I know that okay 600 meters more I hope, mm. yeah then oh, okay. break it for 3k as well yeah Got so it. training is going well I'm, on Mondays I generally try and hit, th- hit that record pace for, for 3k I see so I do like 4 times 1k on Monday at, at around that pace so, so oh, if people good. wanted to find out more about your thoughts follow you I mean there's Facebook but where yeah, else? Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm on TikTok, but you know, TikTok is kind of like my developing channel. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that most of my audience is on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, different, different kind of like age groups. Like TikTok is like the young crowd for sure. Mm. And like, Instagram is slightly older, and then Facebook is like the 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 older crowd. And you have your blog as well. Yes, my blog. Uh, what is the the URL? Is? It's runsofast.com. R u n s o h f a s t dot com. I'm gonna end with a. One yeah, one short thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, typically, how we end all our podcasts is we have this one short thing segment, which is where we just share the one short thing that e- both of us have come across over the past few days that we can share with our audience. Ah, okay. Mm. So it's an article or a video. So we can go first to give you a heads up. Sure. So I realize I did not give you a heads up about this before. <laughs> <laughs> I told yeah. you everything else, but I didn't give you a heads up. So you have like no a minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we can we can move into that because. Yeah. Because yeah, Ruyong has his uh, yeah. training coming up. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I'll just go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just recently bought a book called "The Master: The Brilliant Career of Roger Federer." Mm. Uh, oh, I nice. mean, it's a book I think by a journalist who has accompanied Federer, you know, on on, on tour and everything. And uh, yeah, it's just interesting. It's an interesting point in his career because I think he just turned forty, and just to look back on on the you know such a long career and then how how he maintains his his the level of play, you know, juggling family, juggling Rolex and all these sponsorships, everything through life. I think that's super interesting, which is something I also wanted to mention uh, is that uh, I know in our podcast, we mentioned about your, you know, the sponsorships, all that. It seemed seemed uh, quite strange initially to me, uh, quite chapalang and everything. But after hearing the whole, every you talking about it, I feel like it's as um, Singaporean as as it can be. Like, and, and what you're trying to do is to trailblaze, not only in, in terms of breaking records, but also in terms of uh, an athlete trying having a voice and you know using the voice to con- uh, convert one business or one Singaporean at a time to support your sport as well, which I think is uh, I mean it's commendable at the very least you could say uh. So uh, initially we know we laugh about the chicken rice and all these things, but now I feel like this is as Singaporean an endeavor as we we can ever get like you know trying to get different groups of people who never thought about supporting. Singapore athletic, athletics like this before. And to have a sponsor list, also one yeah. line, a line item say Uncle Lim, Uncle Lim. as a sponsor. <laughs> Chicken rice, Uncle, Uncle Lim. Lim. In yeah. your media kit, I don't yeah. know how you're going to represent the logo of Uncle Lim. But <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. <laughs> la. Yeah, but I, I, just, I only brought this up because we're talking about how an athlete, you're not only just an athlete trying to break records, you're also trying to do a lot of different things in terms of juggling, you know, social media, juggling your public image and all. And yeah, you, you all trailblaze in that way as well. La. Mm. Which is something quite, I mean, really amazing for people to think about. Mm. Thank you very much, Darren. Uh, My one shock thing is the TV show called Atlanta, which I recently started watching. It's on Disney+. Plus. Um, It is created, written, and uh, starring Donald Glover, Mm. Charles Gambino. Mm. You know, um, the guy who did This Is America, he was in Community. So I had heard a lot about the show, um, like rave reviews, critical, universal acclaim. And when I watched it, I was thinking, okay, I'm probably going to be disappointed like, because when it's that highly rated. But I actually really do like it. And I think it is just a story that is told very authentically with writing that you don't see in TV shows generally. 
So I think, I mean, it gives me inspiration to think that someday a show in Singapore is going to get critical re- uh, acclaim around the world. Uh, mm. uh, because that's what I, I always believe. And when I see shows like that, that is not about big sets, it's not about superheroes or anything. It's just a very authentic story about this up-and-coming rapper in Atlanta. And Donald Glover plays this Princeton dropout who becomes his cousin's manager. Like his cousin is a rapper. So yeah, I'm, I'm through one season. I'm starting on the second season and I fucking love it. Okay. Yeah. I do, I, do you listen to Childish Gambino or Donald Glover or anything? I, 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 know, I know who Donald Glover is, but... I, he's I annoyingly listen. talented. Yeah. He's oh, is a right? damn yeah, good rapper. Yeah. He's a comedian. He's a good actor in Atlanta. He created it and wrote and directed. I mean, Jamie Foxx to me is super talented. He can sing, mm-hmm. he can dance, he can act, he can do stand-up comedy. But Donald Glover is, is up there. La. And this is Danny Glover's son, right? No, different. Oh, this is oh, yeah. okay, yeah, 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 totally Donald different. Yeah, 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 totally different. Okay. So I mean, he, he's he's interesting, like, and I mean, for him, I think he doesn't even care about social media because he doesn't need to. Like, mm. he has one post on Instagram or something. I heard he showers once every two weeks, so he's not the, <laughs> the nicest smelling, also. But <laughs> he's so talented that he just does whatever he it's wants, and the things he creates, yeah, are, are great, like. And I think, like, yeah, just the fact that it's 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 a show that's so anchored in just. Like the the very intricate stories of three people, and it's so so universal. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think some, it's only in, I know I said it on the last podcast, but it's inevitable that a Singapore show goes viral around the world. Mm. I yeah, I certainly hope so. Yeah, uh, man. My one show thing was coming on your guys' show. Wow. I mean, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I, I I mean, like I've heard of you guys for a long time, and then I think I definitely listen. I listened to a podcast I think a few years ago. I can't mm. remember what it was, but I listened again when you guys spoke about the 2.4K. Mm. Uh, yeah, so like, thank you very much for having me on the show. You guys are awesome, and I hope that if anything goes viral from Singapore, it'll be you guys. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, and, and, and I really hope this is not the last time we yeah. have you as a guest. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, guess, let me know. As, as if you have anything else to promote or what, I'm, I really hope to get you on and just All talk right. more about it. La. Because I mean, like even for our listeners who, I mean, we have a very strong subreddit community and some of them pointed out that, okay, like, um, because right now you have been in the news a lot. La, mm. And we also wanted to, to make sure that uh, there are certain things we can't talk about, but we also wanted to be objective and, you know, yeah. like, uh, not just hear your sides of the story and not hear the other person's side of the story. So today, I think it was great just to understand you as a person. Mm. Um, and, if once the court case is done, once you can speak about it, it would be great to have you back uh, sometime yeah. again in future. La. Sure. Or maybe sure. even after the 2.4K run, if I don't know, like there's some interesting thing that happens, yeah, just hit yeah, us Yeah, after up. the 2.4K will be fantastic. Yeah. Next also, time you can have donuts uh, to go <laughs> to the biscuits. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Thanks so much All right. for coming Thank you on, very dude. much, Thank guys. You, All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Peace.